All right, welcome back to another episode of Travel Ball Talk. I'm your host, owner of Play in School. Uh, we're heading up, uh, heading up north to the northeast. In fact, to, to talk with Joe Carreri, um, owner, founder, GM of Northeast Pride. Joe, uh, thanks for thanks for taking the late call tonight, man. I appreciate you uh, making the extra effort. How you doing, man? No problem. Thanks for thanks for having me, man. Uh, looking forward to uh, to chatting. You got it. We've done a bunch of these um, these calls. I think we're up to somewhere in the in the in the in the mid eighties as far as the numbers. Maybe, maybe low eighties as far as the number of conversations we've had. And and it just so happens back to back calls with with organizations with absolutely killer logos. Um, so, so just hats off to you, whoever did that. I love it. Um, by the way, for, for those of you listening, Northeast pride can be found on the internet at N E pride And over on, over on Twitter at, um, any pride baseball, any at any pride baseball. There you go. Easy enough. Um, b- before I even go any farther, What's ah uh, the lion pride right something like that? And that yeah the- yeah so uh, yeah so I mean basically um, the way uh, the our graphics guy went with it when he designed it is you know we we're gonna go with the name Northeast Pride you know he went with the lion so you know like looking over looking over the Northeast you know like uh, you know kind of like a the pride yeah. um so. Uh, you know, I think it's a nice little little twist on on uh, you know the word pride actually that that people wouldn't really really come up with. For, so for sure, the lion logo I think really really kind of drives it there. And it and it and it took me a half a beat. It took me literally talking about it out loud to make that connection in my head. Um, so it's yeah. very, it's very cool. So you guys listening, pull up the website, pull up the Twitter, and you'll see it. Um, just a little props the week before uh, the the previous um, um, uh, guest on the on the podcast was Dan Sullivan from Nakona Baseball, which is which is they're partnered up with the, that very old glove company Nakona, and man they've cha- they've kind of updated the the glove company and the travel ball they've updated their their branding and logo is is amazing. So back to back, and I like that stuff, man. You know, like. I get into it. I, I think it's. I think it's a, not to not to steal the word, but it's a point of pride for organizations to put a little bit of effort into that stuff. Um, so, oh, without a doubt. Here's what I want to do. I want to I want to let you um, kind of take the mic for a few minutes, kind of give your background. Um, you know, talk about kind of how you got into this space, and then and then tell us about um, Northeast Pride. I'll. I'll I'll shut up for a few minutes if I can. Okay, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can butt butt in at any time. But um, I mean, really, we started back in we started this back in 2011. So um, this will be you know our tenth year, and you know as you can kind of see, it's it's really kind of morphed into something um, you know something pretty good. So you know, ten years ago, started this one team. Um, I, I've coached baseball since probably. You know my my early twenties. Uh, you know some high school stuff, um, primarily. But um, you know, basically I had a kid, loved baseball. I always loved baseball. I, I, I've been coaching since I'm 23, so um, you know probably for the last 20 plus years I, I, I've been into coaching. And um, you know, 2011 just decided to kind of really take the plunge and and you know kind of start this. Started with one team. Um, you know now we're when at the younger age and I would say about the 2014 um 2014 is probably when we started to kind of expand into uh you know showcase uh you know showcase baseball and you know by uh 2015 you know we had um you know kind of started to build up the organization a little bit and had our first ranked team um with perfect game and you know it's really kind of you know, skyrocketed the last, you know, the last few years where, you know, now we're, you know, probably 185 plus college commits in the last, you know, six years, you know, um, 
to all divisions. So, I mean, we have guys that have gone D1, D2, D3, JUCO, NAIA. So uh, we, we've kind of been able to get guys, you know, all over um, to where now, I mean, you know, we're going to the USA team championship for, you know, we, you know, a newer organization, you know, we, we've played in Jupiter and we're successful in Jupiter. And last year we had, you know, our first, um, pro guy, um, that got, uh, picked up by the, the Rangers after the draft. So, um, you know, it's really kind of, you know, uh, 10 years ago I had an outline and the, you know, when I first started of what my goals were and, you know, the goal was, you know, originally when you first start, you know, you, you want to be the biggest. And, you know, as the years have gone on, you know, what I wanted to really try to do is just create, you know, a different atmosphere for players and, and try to do things, you know, better than everybody else. So it went from the biggest to like, we want to try to be, you know, the, the best in, in our area. So um, really kind of concentrate on, you know, the player development, the exposure and, you know, putting guys, you know, into the right, you know, in front of the right people and, you know, just having opportunities, opportunities that, you know, I didn't grow up with. And, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, my age and in their forties, you know, didn't have back then and, um, you know, and do it at an affordable price too. So mm-hmm. to be able to put guys in, in spots and it, not really break uh, break your bank. So, um, nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, the first thing I want to paint a picture because you did say you know now instead of being the biggest, you want to be the best in your area. Um, and I know you know just from um, the, the conversations we've had before hit and record, you you have players from a bunch of different states. Can, but where uh, where would you where is your home and where are you guys kind of headquartered? Just to sort of paint a picture. So, um, I mean, I, I live in PA, so I'm in Northeast PA, so about an hour north of Scranton on the, the New York borders where I, I, I personally am. So uh-huh. I guess you would kind of call that our headquarters. But, you know, as, as you said it, like we've, uh, you know, primarily uh, we have guys uh, from New York, Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, some Connecticut, I mean, We've had uh, a player from Kansas, a couple guys from Florida, um, Massachusetts, you know, New England those, area. But those, those are the outliers. They're Kansas and Florida are the outliers. But but to, to but you yeah. guys truly have um, kids. Um, you know, the, the name is Northeast, but it's, this is truly a team that is um, spread um, spread you know, out be, yeah. be, beyond beyond one one little township up there in uh, you know right. Su- Susquehanna or or. Uh, whatever whatever little town up there right um yeah i mean really like an hour north of so we have guys an hour or two north of albany you know straight down you know straight down the thruway you know into you know uh duchess orange county westchester new york city long island so we really cover you know a, a good part of the whole state of new york we have some guys from syracuse from rochester area so we really kind of hit every spot uh, of new york and in pa you know the the scranton wilkes-barre hazelton uh area you know um harrisburg i mean we have guys out like in the towards the middle of the state ceiling ceilings grove philadelphia um new jersey so i mean we're really really kind of you're really beating the bushes something yeah i mean you know we, we we like to have good players and uh, we like to be able to provide them every, you know, what they need. And, you know, it doesn't really matter where you're from, mm-hmm. um, you know, and as we expand on that, I mean, we have partner facilities. We have partner facility in the Albany area. We have partner facility in the Orange County, New York area. We have partner facility in Westchester, we have partner facilities in Hazleton and, and Wilkes-Barre, PA. So um, what we're trying to do is really create something where, you know, players can be within an hour, an hour and a half of these facilities and really be able to take advantage of, you That's... know, the player development all year long, um, you know, and then the exposure aspect of it, um, you know, in the summer. 
I have a feeling we're going to come back to this in a, in a few minutes when, when we go through this list of questions, because there's one, there's one specific question that talks about uh, practice and workouts. Uh huh. And, and so we'll, we'll dig into that a little deeper. Um, before we hit record, um, you mentioned your son is a, is a 2023. Um, do you just, is it, is it just the one son or do you have uh, other children? I have four kids. So I have my oldest daughter is 22. Um, then I have a son who is, plays at Lackawanna, uh, uh, community college. Yeah. So coach McCary. The, yep. Coach McCary went to the college world series. Uh-huh. Um, so he plays, plays for him. Um, I have a daughter who's graduating high school on Saturday. Outstanding. And, uh, and then my youngest is a, you know, sophomore of 2023. Holy cow. That place must've been bananas. They were like, uh, would you have like four kids under the age of like six at one point in time? Holy cow. Um, <laughs> Man, what was it? I don't know. I don't know if it was that. I, my math isn't really strong, but I, but um, but yeah. all I know is they're 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 all pretty close, and uh, two and it's their two years, and yeah. it sounded like there was a bunch of them. So, um, <laughs> so the so the the one that's a twenty twenty three, he's 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 the last ball player that's left at this point. Correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah, he's old. Joseph. Joseph. Oh, chip off the old block. Yeah. All right. All right, Joseph. Yeah, but, we're, so we're, everybody everybody calls me Joe, but he he's Joseph. Got so. it. Got it. We uh all right, we're we're rooting for him. Um um cool. Where uh so so in in case you're listening to this way in the future, it is mid June um twenty twenty one currently. So I'm assuming you guys have probably kicked off um the travel ball um um circuit maybe maybe last weekend um yeah just this last weekend um you know usually we start on a normal year we would start um the first weekend in june and we usually have our our big scout day yeah usually like the one of the first days that uh recruiting starts Mm -hmm. um but this year with uh you know still with some COVID issues and New York's high school season kind of being moved yeah. um, back about two weeks. Um, you know, uh, we started this weekend. Um, we're still missing a bunch of guys because of, of, of New York playoffs. But, sure. you know, we're able to, to manage it and, you know, make everything work and, you know, get get guys out there this weekend. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we're we're running through this, the same thing. High, high school's gotten pushed way back. Um, I think we're currently in the, in the playoffs, but you know, uh, school ends here in a couple of days and the baseball season will just keep going apparently. Um, right. <laughs> you know, so meanwhile, the, the travel ball season is going to take the, um, kind of the brunt of that, um, which kind of, which I mean, whatever it's, it kind of stinks in some regards and, and it's good. in in, in other ways, I suppose, to be able to get that high school season in. Um, right. All right. So like I was telling you, we, we, we're doing kind of a new, uh, new format run through these five questions. Um, we'll, we'll peel off in any direction we, we need to, if, it, if, if, uh, you know, if, uh, if we need to, I suppose, and when we need to, uh, but, but I've been, I've been enjoying getting to hear, uh, different coaches, given given some different answers i already know we're going to go in some different directions with you so let's uh let's warm you up with uh with a softball um for, with the first question um sure what book should every coach read so me personally i'm i'm not a big reader um i don't read a ton of books but um i'll i'll give you a movie i would lo- um, i would love a movie so so just like with going through the re- recruiting process here with my younger guy, you know, a bunch of different coaches, you know, obviously ask and, and do a lot of different things. So um, one of the things that he was actually asked to do probably about a, a year ago was watch the movie Warrior. And I thought it was different. Like I thought it was, you know, it was definitely something different that somebody would ask. So I'm like, 
never heard of the movie. I'm like, let me, I'll sit down and I'll like, I'll watch it with them and kind of, kind of see. And, um, you know, watching the movie, I mean, it's really, it's like, it's a family, family movie about like MMA fighter. Um, uh, one's a Marine comes back and is like mentally disturbed. The dad's a drunk. And then you have the other one who the other brother, who's like this straight laced guy who needs money and goes into this MMA fight. And they, it's like, uh, it's like a, a true like underdog story um, type of thing and perseverance. So um, I find it, I found it like really interesting and um, just a different type of story. And, it, and it's probably not something a lot of people have, have watched. Um, but I, mean, I, I highly recommend it just based upon the story and, and the, you know, the underlying stuff that kind of comes out in the movie. I, I think it hits a lot of different, a lot of different things and it's not one of those mainstream movies where everybody's going to know. So, um, you know, that, that would be one that I would, I would recommend. It's kind of like an off the wall one. I'll take it. I'll take it. I like that. It's on the list going over to net Netflix. Yeah. As soon as we get off. Um, cool. Number two. All right. Uh, what regret or failure changed the way you coach for the better regret or failure um, that yeah, changed you for the when better? When I was younger, yeah, when I was when I was younger, when I started coaching, and I was younger, um, when I came in, because I, and I I was a younger guy trying to coach high school level, and um, you know I felt like I needed to try to gain players' respect, and I was I was like that hard ass, like you know, yell, be really hard, be really difficult, and you know try to make their lives miserable, but while making them better, and kind of as I got older, you know, I think I've, I've completely changed from what I started out as and um, like the exact total opposite now. So, you know, what I, I kind of learned as I went is the, the more the players, you know, respect you, like you don't have to be a hard ass to be respected. Um, I think you just need to be straightforward and honest with them and not necessarily be their friend, but, um, you know, just, just relay things differently. And I, I think that has kind of really turned and, um, you know, it's kind of how I try to try to go through with this, with the whole organization as well. So, um, you know, I think it's just, you know, I think I had to be a hard ass when I was younger. Um, but, you know, it definitely kind of morphed into the total opposite of what, what I started. So mm -hmm. I think that's, Wait, at what, at what point do you do you think that transition started to to happen? Um, I mean, probably sometime, you know, my late twenties. You know, uh, you know, I I I started to to change mm -hmm. because uh, players started to re react differently. I think when I when I when I changed, I got I got I got I ended up I w I always got good, I got good results the other way as well so it's not like <laughs> i wasn't getting good results I but gotcha. um I, I feel like the overall atmosphere was just better um yeah you know so um you know i mean being a hard ass works for some guys you know and you know doesn't work for other guys so it's just really kind of depends depends on your players but you know i want i want the players to learn and get better and that but they also need to have fun when they're playing the game um, if they're not having fun when they're playing the game and you're not having fun when you're coaching it, you know, it, it is, it is a game, you know? So, um, you know, I think mm -hmm. having fun, you know, it, that fun atmosphere, you know, creates a winning atmosphere as well. So for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot to be said about maturity and just being able to identify that in yourself as you, as you got a little older. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right, here here we go. I think this is going to open up a little bit of a can of worms for us. Uh, question number three, how much midweek practice do you guys run, and is it uh, team practice or individuals? And uh, I think we got a little preview into this with, uh, with what you guys called your partner facility. So now I'm, I'm uh, curious to talk about this. Yeah, so, I mean, kind of what we do um... – so usually what we do with our older guys, our younger guys are a little different, but like, so let's say our older guys, um, say high school ages and up, um, usually what we'll do 
um, before the season starts is we get everybody together. So we'll do full team workouts. So wherever you're from, like you are coming, you're coming to, you know, usually Pennsylvania. Uh, this year we did it in uh, New York as the weather, weather was bad. And we had to do it inside, but so usually bringing everybody in, um, we'll do full team, you know, full team workouts, um, you know, offensive stuff, defensive situations, first, third, bunt, all that stuff. So we get all the, all that stuff out of the way and teams kind of know what it is, uh, you know, we're doing, doing each week um, defensively and offensively. And then, you know, kind of as we, as we, uh, you know, break up into the season, you know, we'll have, um, you know, any Westchester area, New York city guys will basically go and do midweek uh, workouts in, in Westchester um our albany area guys will go up and and work with uh, uh a chamber of sports performance up there in in albany area which is one of my scout team coaches who runs that facility um so they'll they'll work out up there usually multiple days a week um in uh in lower new york there we'll do we do uh two workouts a week usually in orange county and then um pa we do um full workouts actually the the pa workouts are are pretty more intense because we have some more local area guys at at some of those so um they go about three days a week um and they'll do uh baseball um baseball activities outside and then we do um lift speed and agility and do you know have a whole program for that and you said well. that's the one and in the Philly area? That's in, uh, like, Scranton area. Okay. So, Scranton area, you're going, like, three days a week. Um, you know, depending on tournaments and mm-hmm. and and games and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, we just picked up a new partner facility in, in the Hazleton area. So, um, we'll be doing similar stuff, you know, pretty much, like, 45 minutes down the road from or an hour from, from Scranton doing that. Um, so basically guys are able to get in any of their stuff during the week that they need their BP defensive work, bullpens. Um, so every, everything's available to them, um, regardless. So if they're playing in the organization, they have an opportunity to do that. Now, some of the guys we have, like, as you get down towards like Philly and South Jersey, um, or like our guys up in Syracuse, um, you know, it's a little different. Some of those guys are coming, just, you know, me doing the, the preseason workout, doing any winter stuff that we have, like during the winter we'll do for the older guys, we'll do three or four, um, events as well throughout the winter where we're kind of bringing everybody in as the whole organization. Um, so, you know, while, you know, we, we just want to make sure everybody is, is taken care of now, now I'm, know, development I'm, wise. I'm, cu- I'm kind of curious and, and I could imagine there might be one person listening who, who maybe is in a similar situation where they're spread out geographically. And, and so is this, is this literally like uh, where you guys reach out to a facility that's in this area and you say, Hey, we're, my team's going to rent this space from you, whatever it's a cage or a tunnel, the whole place, whatever, um, and we, we're going to make a deal with you and we're going to, we're going to be the team that's in here in this particular space on this particular nights every single week. And, um, and you make that available to your guys. Is it, I mean, am I missing it or is it, is it as simple as that? Or is there actually, more complex than that? Actually, well, to- totally opposite really. Okay. So, um, so when, when I started originally, we were just kind of like in a, like I would say this probably started to take off around that 2015, 2016, where we really started to kind of expand. So how it actually started to become to this is, you know, we were starting to put some guys into colleges and we're really starting to, you know, make a name for ourselves. And the way I kind of did it, do stuff is, is different than a lot of people. Um, so it kind of caught the eye of, of, um, you know, uh, a guy up in Albany, which is Dan Sauceville, ran Sauce Baseball. And he had about 25, 30 guys. And he was like, listen, he was like, I really like what you're doing. Like, I want in. Like, mm. I want to bring my guys in. I want to be part of what you're doing. And he was like, so that's really kind of how this all started to morph. 
Um, you know, so we started getting guys from Albany, and then somebody put me in touch with with Eric Holtz in Westchester, who he's the manager for Team Israel for the for the Olympics. Nice. Um, so you know, then we kind of got that Westchester connection, and um, you know, then last year, you know, we had some talks with uh, Mike Petrovsky out of PA and. He bought a couple teams in as well, and just wanted to be part of the brand and kind of help build what we're we're doing. And and now um, Orange County, we're, we're Orange County, New York is a little different because we're just we're doing pretty much what you said. There's an independent facility, and we're kind of kind of kind of going there and run run baseball gotcha. activities in, in there. And then um, GSA Gutsy Sports, which is in Hazleton, um, you know, we just uh, we used their facility a little bit this winter. And they had a couple, they had some teams, and and that Northeast PA area is like a hotbed for baseball. So there's a ton of talent um, there, and you know we really wanted to take advantage and hook up with them. So we we got that. So they have a couple teams that are going to come in and be part of the brand, and um, really just kind of keep going. Um, you know, we're looking to kind of get out towards like Williamsport area and. Uh, and PA and, you know, we'll just kind of keep, keep moving. But really what it is, is, you know, just creating what we've created, um, you know, people, people want to be part of it. So, Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I like it. That's a, that's a, you know what, that's a pretty good compliment. If they're reaching out and saying, Hey, we got some, we like, we like what you're doing. And, um, and we got some guys, that's a, that's the ultimate compliment. Uh, if you're running an organization, Cool. Well, that uh, that's that's good. This is that's good information. All right, here we go. Let's see number number four. I'm not going to skip any here. What's the one piece of advice you'd give someone that's just starting a travel team organization, or if they're opening up a facility? I mean, you've been inside enough facilities. You can give give advice on the team stuff and the facility stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, be as honest as you can. Um, I mean, if you talk to any of the guys or parents or anybody who plays for us, I'm pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys in the business aren't. I know they. everybody has good intentions of what they want to do, but, you know, can't always follow through with it. So if I say something, you know, we, we, we follow through. So honestly, the, the best thing is just be, be honest with people. Um, don't oversell yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, don't undersell yourself, but if you're, if you're going to really sell it, like make sure you're really providing what it is, you know, that you're, you're saying you're going to do. Um, I mean, I honestly, that, 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 that would be probably the best advice. That's awesome. You, you, you know, I used to, yeah, I, I used to not be, I guess, I don't know how to put this. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the organizations that had, you know, a million teams. Right. So, you know, right. it's, the 17 has the A team, the B team, and you know the 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 G team, the 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 Q team, and you're just like, what in the world, man? Right. And and honestly, now I'm just like, hey, oh, the kid's gonna play somewhere. So good for you for providing the opportunity, but it comes a, it comes with a caveat. As long as you're being transparent, that what happens with the kids on the A team is not what's happening with the kids on the H team, right? Like right. each, each team has to have its own sort of like mission statement and their, and, and their own goals. And as long as you're communicating that clearly with mom and dad, and they understand that then cool, have a hundred teams. I don't care. Um, you, you, you know, but, but that transparency and that honesty, I think is, is, is the key to uh, to that situation. Um, yeah. I mean, you hit on something there too. Cause the, I mean, we do have teams like, so like we do have multiple teams at some age group. So I'm not going to say like, we, we don't have that. Um, you know, I don't necessarily label them like a B or, or C, um, you know, but like, like we've already talked about. Did I lose you? Uh, I'm here. I can hear you. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, so like, we've already established we're getting players from all over the place. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, everybody's talent level is different. So that's obviously the teams are going to have different talent levels, but yeah. 
we try to build everything. So it's not like we're trying to create two or three teams from, you know, one area. So if we have multiple teams, we have multiple teams throughout three, four states. So mm-hmm. it's like players from all over the place. So, um, like you could say like our, if you want to call it that, like our B 13 U team made the championship this weekend at a tournament they played in. Like our, if you want to call it a B C like our, our third level 15 U team, you know, made the championship this weekend at the tournament they were in. So, um, you know, so we, we have talent uh, on, on those teams. Um, you know, if you're creating the teams just to make the money, then that that's to that's totally different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so for sure. All right, here's here's a here's a question that often opens up a can of worms. Um, what one change could be made to travel baseball that would have the biggest positive impact? So, if I could give you a magic wand and uh, and let you make a change, is there anything you can think of that would have a the greatest positive impact? <laughs> that's a that's a loaded question. Yeah, you know <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I don't know. There's so much. It's hard to really kind of. It's pick, really kind of hard to narrow. On, pick pick some low on, hanging fruit. On pick, one. pick some low hanging fruit for us. Oh, it's so tough. So tough. Um, one thing you could change. So there's so many. I mean, one thing. I mean. I mean, everybody will attest to this. There's so many tournament venues now and there's so many games and there's so many teams. Mm -hmm. Um, So like one of the biggest frustrations I think is probably the umpires. Oh Um, man. Yeah. (laughs) You know, uh, like I'll hit on something that's really not consistent, you know, with team. So like there's just so much. So like, you know what happens the more there is like, like we talked about with the teams, like, you know, you got A, B, C, D teams, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, the, you know, the talent goes down. I mean, it's the same. So, um, you know, so some of the venues, it's, you know, not knowing the rules and oh. trying to move games around time limits. I, I would say time limits is probably an, another one because, oh, interesting. you know, maybe it's not the umpires. Maybe it's, you know, the instruction to be like, listen, you got to get this game done in an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, that's we got to roll the next. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> you know, so 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 so. In all honesty, maybe maybe it would be better without the time limit. Now I know it's all about the money at some of the facilities, so they got to make sure that everything's on time. But you know, even if you increase that time limit a little bit, maybe your quality of the game would would yeah. actually go up. Because I mean, you go play. Just think about like a thirteen u or fourteen u game that's played now and you have some mid-level teams, you know, you're going to have walks, you're going to have errors, people paying a lot of money to play in these games. And what's happening is you're playing five innings. So you get 13, 14 guys on a roster, you're playing four or five innings a a game because of time limits. You know, we're kind of, we're kind of neglecting, you know, the the players at that point. So, yeah, the, um, so then you get the devil's advocate is if you're, if you expect, if you remove these time limits or expand the time limits and you're like the fifth game of the day on that field, uh, you might not even play. You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, it's just, I mean, well, I mean, you just have to, I mean, you're, you're taking, you make an adjustment. You're, maybe maybe you, you eliminate a game may, at the end of the day. Instead of five games on that field, you do four games on that field and expand each, each, uh, each game by an hour or something. Um, I mean, not even an hour. I mean, I mean, realistically you should be able to play a seven inning game in two hours and 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, if it's a clean game, then it's going to be done in, in about two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you just give it, if you just give it that extra 10 minutes, I mean, I just mm-hmm. think the extra 10 minutes allows you to, to play more. The, um, um, the, you the, know, the topic of umpires is really interesting. Apparently there's been um, just like a nationwide shortage uh, yeah. I, th- I think I think umpiring and officiating in all sports has been has been a really tough gig here for a few years just because of the absolute abuse from some coaches and a lot of parents that that people just yeah. don't want to do it. So you have you have you have that happening, and then the perfect storm with uh, you know with the COVID stuff. 
where down here and, and in a lot of parts of the country, um, high school sports got compressed all after Christmas break. Um, and, and so, you know, that same guy who would usually officiate uh, football in the fall and then he'd do basketball in the winter and then he'd do baseball uh, in the spring, that that's only one guy. And we got we got so many different seasons going on simultaneously right now uh, that just it's just run thin to the to the point where I've right. I've I've heard of situations where umpires just aren't showing like there's that few there's like a there's a there's like a nationwide shortage which is um which is yeah I'll tell you I think you've I think you've you 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 uh I think you've hit on a really important issue that may, per, perhaps this is a um a problem that um some of the you know these leaders in our youth sports industry, your youth baseball industry, can help with. Like I and, and I'm totally I'm totally in the dark. I don't know if they already are, but it it would be kind of amazing if they already aren't doing it. If Perfect Game or PBR um, would jump in and create a, an umpire training um, sort of sort of situation where they're growing right. the, the next the next round of umpires uh, across the country. It, it, uh, PG, PBR, if you're listening, you can you can have that idea. I'm sure it'll make you a million bucks, um, <laughs> you know, by training. And that's all that's all yours. That's all yours. I, I won't take a cut of that. Um, but I but I think I think that's a kind of a cool idea, um, you know, because if we're going to be, keep playing these games and expanding the number of teams and expanding the number of venues, well, somebody has to call balls and strikes. Um, interesting. Right. Interesting. Right. Man, you get you're getting me fired up here at this late hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, is there is there anything else? You, you you seem like you had a long list, but there were some things you maybe didn't want to get into. Is there anything else you do want to get into as far as maybe something you would change um, to to you know to help travel ball? Um. I mean, I think I th- I think those are two like you know, within the actual game itself that, that, that we play that, you know, would be, you know, that would be helpful. Um, you know, I mean, the other, uh, you know, just, uh, some advice to coaches who are running showcase programs is, you know, make sure you make sure you have your a paper roster when you're going, <laughs> you're charging these kids a couple thousand dollars to play. And we're at a tournament this weekend. I have coaches coming over to me, and we always have the paper rosters because that's what we do. Yeah. And when he comes over to me, and we're the third game of the day, and tells me I'm the first guy who had a paper roster of the day. Stop it. And he's watched six teams play. Stop yeah. He's it. like, he's like, oh, I'm one, one for six for the day. You know. So you have these parents paying a whole lot of money for something. You know, like so we talked about the honesty stuff before. It's like they're paying a lot of money. You're telling them you're going to get their kids recruited. You know, make sure you're actually helping them. Uh, you know, get their kids recruited. It's like, the it's have it, their that's the lowest changed. that's the lowest bar to 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 jump over to even consider being help. It's such it's a it's a one page with some limited information. Name, graduate, yeah. high school. You know, if you can throw a GPA and an SAT on there, that's God. a bonus. If you can put a an email and a phone number. That's a bonus. And if you're going the extra mile, you maybe, maybe put your website down at the bottom, maybe put your, your cell phone so they can contact you. And if you're really going the extra mile, you've probably already filmed all your guys, put the link to where the coaches can see the film so that when they get back to the office, they say, Hey, I saw this, um, you know, the, the recruiting coordinator or the, the hitting coach or whoever saw a kid and he gets back and he wants to, wants to talk to the head coach. He said, I saw this kid. I liked him. Here's his film. Boom. The link is right here. Make it simple for right. these guys. I don't, you know, I th- there's my biggest piece of advice for any travel ball coach. Make the life of the college coach as easy as possible. That's going to help right. that. If that you helps make, your kid. Right. Like, right. I mean, honestly, I mean, we make sure, you know, we have it. We do include the GPA and the contact information because a, a lot of the venues, when they give out roster packets, 
you know, their contact information isn't on there. So yeah. they might like, like a guy, but then don't have the contact information. So yeah. we always make sure you have the contact information. And then uh, one other thing you want to talk about the travel ball is the, the, the comp, the tournament companies who charge the coaches for the roster package. Like, <sighs> like you have the teams. Dude, the team just paid a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks. I get it. Listen, yeah, hey, have, I get it. Yeah, hey, you yeah. got to run down to Staples, and that, and it adds up. But listen, you just charge us fifteen hundred bucks, and oh by the way, you're going to charge mom and dad fifty bucks to come in for the weekend. And right, why are but, we charging college coaches for anything? For anything. Well, and then and the, well, what about the advertising that's in some of those packets too? So like you have advertising <laughs> dollars going into some of those Correct. programs and packets, like Correct. like. Uh, to me, like the college yeah. coach is coming there, it's doing you a favor because hundred like, percent. The reason the reason the teams are going there was because there's going to be college coaches, you know. So so give those give those guys packets for free, um, for sure. You know, so, I mean, for so, sure. Uh, yeah, man. Now you now you now you got me heated up a little bit. There's and and honestly, that's a simple that's a simple thing, and it does cost money to go print a bunch, but you're you know. It's not. It's not like you're printing a, a thousand of these things, right? You're printing. You're printing a few dozen to a few hundred. Um, so it's not. Right. Go. Go get one more sponsor. Done. Okay. Done. Right. And, and it covers I, I, you're it. You're talking easy. about your, an average of fifteen hundred dollars to three thousand dollars team for Correct. for an event. Yeah. I mean, and 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 you know you you're know. getting a hotel kickback too. So I mean, shouldn't that be all cover the right. uh, the print the printing? Good grief. Ten, good grief 10 bucks 10 bucks 10 bucks to 10 bucks a room per night oh, it's it's incredible yeah. listen let's not let's not go too far down this deep end I, i've i've enjoyed this i think we hit on some interesting things with um especially with with your your partner facilities and just just the way you're spread out geographically but you're still able to um pr- you know provide access for your players <clears throat> and if anybody's still listening you can go on the um any pride baseball.com and click on the college commits and you'll you'll see this is uh you know as legitimate an organization as any as any of them out there sending sending ki- kids to you know co- like you mentioned at the beginning colleges of all levels but quality colleges at all levels um so congratulations on that do you have any other sort of you know parting shots of wisdom for for you know the three listeners who are left with us at this point <laughs> No, I mean that's it. I mean I really appreciate you having me on and you know, it was a pleasure pleasure talking and you know, thanks for getting us out there. All right, listen, stay stay on the line one second. I'm gonna hit um I'm gonna stop the recording that way we can really get into the dirt. Sure. <laughs> 